Next call. Um, I have Kim on line 12, David. Her husband is a minister, but he seems to be having some problems with his job description. What a pregnant thought that is. Kim? Yes. Can you speak up, please? Yes. How old are you? I'm 38. Your husband's a minister? Yes. What's going on? I don't quite get it. Well, my daughter discovered, um, after overhearing a phone conversation, that um, he was having an affair. And um, He's not even discreet, huh? No, he, he's been calling from our house quite often. How old is your daughter? Uh, she's 13. So he's not even protecting her from this? No. See, that's, that's the concern. Look, um, if that's going on, it means... Uh, that he's on the edge of uh, of um, of something. This is more complicated than this. What else is going on? Well, I discovered um, through another phone call that um, he was not only involved in this affair, but in actually involved in yet another affair. Okay, that's what's going on. All right, so he's out of control. Yes, he uh also has a gambling problem. He's way out of control. He's a minister. Mm-hmm. And even, how, how, what kind of a gambling problem? Um, he deals in baseball cards and in the stock market and anything that he can um, put money into, actually. I mean, he's, he's had antique postcards. He's had um, dimes and, and rare coins. Um, he's obsessed with making... He, he's obsessional. Yes, very... Okay. Have you confronted him? Yes. What was that like? He denies everything. What What did you say to him? Well, I confronted him with um, his his boss, and um, we had all of the paperwork. I went down and searched his car one night and found um, a, his whole trunk full of baseball card um, paraphernalia and canceled checks and... Paraphernalia? What do you mean paraphernalia? Well, the cards and books, two-inch thick books on how to work baseball cards for for income. Mm -hmm. um, he's also been gambling in Vegas quite quite a bit. What does um, he gamble with? What is his, what is his choice? Um, C uh, cards, slot machines, dice, what? Well, I, I think he plays something at a table. Okay, it could be roulette. Um, and, and the machines, he loves, he loves roulette machines. Yeah. Okay, you've got an obsessed, compulsive husband. Well, and he's a minister? Mm-hmm. And he was the director of, um, our denominational, um, denomination seminary. He's very visible and he's very, um, I don't know. Tainted. Yeah. Okay. He's a sick guy. And he's way out of control. Does he drink? Um, not that I know of. Does he use drugs? Not that I know of, but I I wouldn't put it past him. Okay. And what's more, you're falling out of love with him. Um, it's gone. Yeah, that's what I'm feeling. So what are you going to do about this? Well, my struggle comes when um, my denomination will will tell him that he can have his ministry if he will repent and um, go through this two-year restoration period, but um, they won't let me continue mine. Continue your what? My particular ministry. Explain. I work with kids and run uh, direct summer camp. Why won't they let you do it? Because I want to file for divorce. So they're punishing you and... What a sexist denomination. Uh-huh. I mean, I can say that because you haven't said anything about it. Mm-hmm. And what a self-serving denomination. Mm hmm And what a totally unfair thing this is. Mm hmm So, uh, but then again, um, religion is a man's world, right? Yep. And see, the other part of this is, is that I've got, a, I've got um, a mother who likes to call one of his girlfriends and um, make threatening phone calls and talk to her children and... How does your mother know about all this? Because my mother and I were very close at one point. But now your mother's out of control. Very. Gosh, I mean, 
This is a soap opera. It, well, you don't even know the half of it. Give me the other half. Um, his second girlfriend called me and said that we were in a sisterhood of the betrayed. Because he's messing around on him. Her, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Was she referring to the other girl that the, your, your daughter overheard? Uh, yes. So, well, there's no, hell hath no uh, fury like a woman scorned. Maybe the two of you could um, unite forces. <laughs> I don't think so. No? The church is too powerful? Yeah. You're never going to get what you want out of them? No. But see, what what hurts me is that um, I'm having a real tough time just trying to hang on. I mean, I've got three kids. I've got two other little girls. And they're torn, and and they, I mean, their dad was their link to um, not only life, but, but their God. Well, the fact is, he's a dishonest human being, as all compulsive people are. And so what do I tell these, these two little girls who love their daddy? You tell them the truth. The daddy's not being honest, that, that, he's, um, that he's, he's, he's gambling, that he's not sincere, and that he's not religious and that you can't live with that. But you can't prolong the misery, and you can't allow this to get get deeper and deeper. And if you get in a fight against this this uh, religious sect, just my experience with fighting religions is that they get so defensive and heavy-handed that they make everybody's life miserable, and there's no revenge except for you living away from this man in a life that is honest, where you can be loved for yourself, and you will be able, if you do that, to work with children in some other guise, and it, you don't need to call it a ministry, you can just work with children, and your work and its excellence determines the, the, the ministry quality of the thing. Hypocrisy reigneth in the land. Well, that obsession thing is really true tonight, isn't it? I mean, almost every call has been something about obsession. Yeah, well, I don't know how to judge that, but it, uh, we ought to talk a bit about obsession because when people become obsessed, it's usually to avoid thinking about something else that hurts. And this woman that I just spoke with, she must have been falling out of love with him for a long time before this, and his obsession must have been about his insecurity. I mean, anyone who needs two girlfriends and a wife and a gambling problem and to be an avid collector of a lot of things, she sounds like a, a person that could not accept any truth about himself or the fact that he was losing uh, his own personal power. But in your advice to her when you said that um, she had to talk to, the, to her daughters and tell them the truth, that's probably of all the stuff that you told her. From my own experience, I know that that must be the hardest part, is to talk to your children and, and say things that are so painful. Well, because it means you're making it real. If you're telling me this now, it means this is why you're acting. The kids appreciate the truth. They can live with the truth. They cannot live with a lie. The, do they want me to break now? I think um, I want you to go to commercial. Yes, yeah, see, I, I'm being controlled by this woman. I don't know whether I like this, but I'll do it. Commercial, coming right back after this. Do I sound like...